so we just arrived at our first campsite for our five night trip and this is literally like the campsite of my dreams i've always wanted to be on sites like this but i didn't realize that you could that the way you found them was by canoe camping so i've done so much backpacking and um quite a bit of car camping but the way you find these beautiful sites right on lakes is by canoe camping and i'm just going to show you where we are okay so here is the campsite we already have our food bags on the rock we have this lovely fire pit and here is our view and it is a very hot day so i am going to as soon as we get the tent set up i'm going swimming off this rock and there is no one here so i'm going skinny dipping and i'm just gonna like be nature be natural <laughs> in nature this is my absolute uh dream campsite i am i'm very pleased to have landed here our first night of our canoe camping trip in Verandry. So we're day two, the morning of day two, and we're coming up to our first portage of the day. And we have a lot of portages today. Um, this one, you can see the sign right there. They're clearly marked here. And then you can see where the water, or maybe you can hear it. Anyways, we can't, we can't canoe up that little bit of rapids, rocky rapids. So we're going to portage where that sign is. This is one of our first more serious portages. It's not even like a kilometer. It's only 320 meters. So, so that's not really that significant. But um, here I am carrying the bag. I'm also carrying Damien's guitar and our paddles. And I'm going for a little walk in the woods with all this stuff. I'll show you the path I'm taking. And that's where I'm going. Here's what I'm going to be carrying in my hands. That's where we came from. And we're still going to have to come back to get another bag because we don't have this exactly all dialed in yet.
Okay, so we're at our night two, day two camp, which is um, on a little point. Uh, yeah, a point of an island in a fairly big lake. So we've got a lot of, um, and it's been a warm day, and so and the wind is blowing our way, which is really great because it's been a very hot day. Um, and yeah, breeze is nice for bugs and just for cooler air. And I think it's going to be cooler um, tomorrow and in the days coming up. So I'll give you a tour of our campsite here. Okay, so we're making supper there. Over here is our tent site. And we bought a new tent this summer, a tarp tent. We've used the same model when we through hiked the Appalachian Trail and really liked um, the lightweightness and the design. And it's a great tent. We bought a new one this summer and we're very happy with it so far. Uh, and then over here, you can see this is, whoa, very bright. This is the lake and this is where the breeze is coming off. And the canoe is there. And back up around to the campsite. So this is campsite number two. morning of day three and um we're leaving our campsite it's a cooler day today and we're going to do less kilometers today and um take a bit more of a rest this afternoon i'm looking forward to a rest afternoon um tea and reading and resting and fire building <laughs> so um, but we've got maybe 12 kilometers to paddle um, there, maybe, yeah. Anyways, we're off from our uh, second night, um, off for another day of paddling. Hi, so we're at uh, our site three of our five nights and we did less kilometers today. We did 12 something. Um, Damien got a rash. Something bothered his foot yesterday um, and right where his sandal is um, on the inner part of his foot and on the portages of which we had quite a few yesterday. So we had five to... Well, one was pretty long. One was 880 meters yesterday. But we had um, quite a bit of little stints of walking. And it just got um, really irritated. And we have some big portages coming up. And uh, so we just thought, let's just take a rest day. And we have the time. And also, it's just lovely to stop early. So we've, we got here at, I think, 1230 which is like super early for us to stop and camp. I mean, very rarely do we <laughs> do we camp so early. But that means that we have time for, um, I'm drinking tea right now, playing with the drone, I'm going to make a fire, probably have a nap. I'm reading a book on, or not orienteering, I guess orienteering, using a compass and a map. Um, so just, it's like a camp afternoon and it's lovely where we are.
Hi, so it's day four. We are in a bay that's going to be um, going down to these little, I guess, rivers or creeks. And eventually we hit just land and then we are going to have to portage. And it's our big portage of the trip. Uh, it's 1.1 kilometers, but it's a beautiful morning. So we've just paddled through like, if you can see, swamp land back there. The weather water was like, I don't know, felt like only that deep at times. Probably it was deeper. Um, and now we are getting across a culvert. We have a portage. I'll show you what that looks like. So this is where we have to portage. Here, there's like a culvert back there. And here's our little trail. Damien just went to go check out what the situation is like if we're gonna carry the canoe over our heads or if we're gonna carry it with our hands. So we arrived at our day four camp, night four. Uh, today we did, well, according to Damien's, what is it called when it measures your distance? GPS. <laughs> GPS, okay. Yeah. According to the GPS, we did 12 and a half, 12.7? 12, 12, 12 and three quarters kilometers. But I think, and it's funny because our distance, what I'm able to calculate on the map doesn't quite match up with what it what it actually is. So I think I thought maybe we were going to do 15 a day or 11. I haven't checked that yet. But anyways, 12 and three quarters, um, which is not um, long for paddling. But we did um, like 1.7 of those was a portage, two different portages. And one of those was over a kilometer. And it also rained on us most of the day. It's um, early afternoon right now to oh, what's actually almost three o'clock and so mid-afternoon and it's not raining now which is nice so we got to set up our tent in a dry spot or in not a dry spot but without it raining on us um so we did portages today a lot of carrying of gear and puddled in pouring rain um just just a downpour and um intermittent rain and then just you know we we downpour right before our big portage we saw a bald eagle and we also saw another very large raptor, which might have been a bald eagle, like a juvenile form or a falcon. I'm not sure. That also was during the pouring rain. So I couldn't get a good <laughs> sighting on it, but it was very majestic. It was very beautiful to see. And now I'm going to, I'll show you, start a fire with this pile. I'm going to attempt with this pile of wood right here that I cut with this saw. It is silky big boy is what it's called. I can't open it up all the way one-handed, but you can open it all the way so it extends. And so I, I cut some wood, tried to find some drier wood <laughs> in, um, in the woods, of which there are many here, you can see. Uh, so now I'm going to try to build a fire. Uh, and uh, then we're going to take it easy. For the rest of the afternoon and uh this is the lake we're on tonight so this is our fire after an hour we've been working at this for an hour <laughs> damien joined in and helped me cut some more little uh dead trees like this size um it looks really great right now but like then it goes down to just nothing so we're trying it's something to do at the campsite and I think we're we're, we're going to be done the fire now uh, pretty soon even if it's well it sounds like it's taking off well <laughs> but at some point you cut your losses we don't need a fire to cook or to stay warm we've got everything we need to advise and tend and I got really sore shoulders today after um carrying after portaging uh with weight um, 
in not the greatest, like, these aren't backpacking backpacks. Anyways, that's the update on the fire. Well, what's really fun about this video, obviously, is the hair <laughs> situation. I combed it out after we got the fire established and after we were here. Speaking of which, fire did get established. I'll show you that there. There it is. It has been burning now for over three hours. Um, this is a nice thing, a new thing for me with canoe camping. Uh, with backpacking, often we're, we're backpacking um, from like these huts or not huts, like lean-tos, um, structures, shelters <laughs> on um, the Long Trail or the Appalachian Trail or other places. But generally, fire building is not part of that routine, both just the time. You just don't have the time at the end of the day. And there's not fire pits. Um, not not always depends on where you are but it's just not as much of the experience um and and when we're canoe camping like like I showed earlier I have my saw <laughs> so you just have you can just take more tools so having a fire has been a new thing we've done it for the last two days because we've come into camp early and that's also something with backpacking we don't do a lot of um you just have uh just takes well, I guess, you know, we could get to the point with canoe camping that we come into camp really late. I don't know, but we're not there yet. Um, today was a day of portaging. We had a pretty significant portages and lots of rain. And then we were done. Um, and as far as this this campsite, it's my least favorite. I'm going to give you a tour here. Uh, yeah, there's the, the beach here is nasty. Not even a beach, but... Um, and I found here at least that the campsites like that are at the tip of um, a peninsula or a little outcropping or um, on an island have been um, nicer campsites. Although last night's campsite was on a bay and that was lovely. Um, but yeah, this, this campsite is a little my least favorite of our trip, but it's definitely decent and we've had a fire going. Um, yep, so that's it. That's the report for today. It's like six. Let me take, I'm trying to see my time. It's like 20 after six. We've, we're done eating. I'm um, going to hang the food bags and then get into the tent soon and uh, relax and go to sleep. leaving our night four campsite. Um, and I just, one thing I wanted to uh, say is, oh, there you go, see, there's also a portage here. It's how quiet we have found it out here in a way that we have not experienced in a lot of out, other outdoor contexts. Um, like for the past two nights, well, before the rain came on the night before last night, it's been, just like completely quiet and still you don't hear um the wind you don't hear insects um not in the middle of the night at least it's just been very quiet um even right now with a little bit of the wind in the background ruffling the trees there's a bit of noise but yeah it's just it's oh see there's a bug duck <laughs> very quiet um, and so that when you do hear an animal, like usually birds, um, it's a nice treat. I'll show you the view that we'll be canoeing out on. So this is the 
the little mouth of the bay where we were staying. Not the nicest. I'll show you this. This is like, eh. This is not a nice beach area. Very muddy. Um, but this is where we are. It's gray today, but it's not yet raining. So yay. I don't know if it will rain. Um, oh, bug. Okay. Um, we're going to be going around that point there and up that way. So it's a very foggy day and we're actually, the canoe is turning now, but kind of see those little waves? They're not very big. We're riding them in that direction there and we're just making great time with the wind at our backs. Okay, hey, so we're at our night five campsite. It's a beautiful uh, campsite. It's in a grove of cedars, big fire pit area. Um, yeah, it's like a cedar grove. I'm on the beach here. I'll just, I'll turn around and show you. This is the view exactly from where I'm sitting right now. What I was thinking about, what's really struck me about this trip is this is the most remote trip that I've probably ever done. Um, you know, I've been on the Appalachian Trail <laughs> for many, many miles, um, but there you see lots of people. Um, there's town and road crossings. Um, you, you have cell service, although when we did it, we didn't do a lot of that, but like there's cell service a lot of the way out here there's very few people today we saw i think four fishing boats in 22 kilometers we have not seen any canoes today or yesterday um we have campsites to ourselves we have no cell service and i haven't had any i i've never had a situation like this in as long as i've had you know, a cell phone and certainly a, a smartphone like an iPhone where I've been this long without any connection. Um, so I'm on day four now because we left Wednesday afternoon and we're now Sunday afternoon. So that's four full days without connection. And it'll be five full days by the time tomorrow. A little short of five full days. And what's interesting about that is how I have no idea what's happening in the wider world. None whatsoever. Like I don't like there could be disasters happening. There could be natural disasters, political disasters, um, all the things that go on. And I am oblivious. Like if this, if this was like 9-11 or something, you know, that could happen. I have no idea. I'm just out here canoeing. Um, that is something that's very wonderful very needed for me right now. I really needed that after this summer. And I'm very grateful for having that. Um, the only part of that that I don't like is that I'm out of contact with the kids who are grown, by the way, <laughs> as in young adults, they live at home. But like, and I realized this morning as I was laying in bed in the tent, I was like, I forgot to give them our landlord's contact information in case something happens. Like, one time our our shower pipe burst and just things happen like what if they need to contact the landlord oops i forgot to do that uh we gave them information about where we were going where we're putting in how many days would be out all that but not like some of the details like that about um home life who to contact in an emergency related to the apartment um that's the only part of being disconnected that i find at all Oh, it's getting sunny. Just a moment. There, I found a, there, I found a spot out of the blazing sun there. Um, the, that disconnection from the kids is the only part that is at all, like, uncomfortable. <laughs> and it's not even that. It's just like, oh, I'm really, they're just going to have to figure things out on their own, which is also a good thing. Um, and... But we do realize that if we do more of this, which we plan to, that we probably should get um, one of those GPS, I don't know what they're called, a beacon thing or a thing that can send out a distress signal um, 
we have seen people every day, but if something was to happen to one of us, it's not like the other person can hike out to get to where the nearest um, known point of contact with humans is. We have to paddle and we can't paddle solo. Like we, that's really hard. So that's the thing we're like, hmm, we need one of those um, just, to, just to make, in, in case of emergencies, um, to make it a little more safe. Um, we have like everything we need otherwise though, you know, the first aid kits and the, all the gear and all, all the things that like, if we need to stay put for a couple days and like, we're good. Um, but if one of us had to get out on our own to try to get help, that would be hard canoeing. That's the thing we're learning as we do this. Like it's different than hiking because somebody can just head out on foot, but not so much, um, when you're out in the wilderness in a canoe, um, yeah, so that's kind of the thing I've been thinking about today, just that I'm disconnected from the world and I'm really loving that um, and also hoping that everything's going okay at home for the kids and they're not encountering any anything that um, they, can't, they can't manage. Um, but it's good also to have that chance to gain independence and manage things on your own. Yeah, so next up I'll, I'll show you the campsite uh, once I get the fire going. Well, I got it going. It hasn't rained for 24 hours, so that helps. So we just saw a black bear um, swimming from one piece of land to another. I'm not exactly sure if it was from an island to an island. I, I don't have the map in front of me. Point is, last night we didn't hang our food because we were on an island. And we were like, oh, it's only just going to be rodents. And we'll put it in this black bag that we have that is very resistant. Like rodents can't chew through that one. And then we just realized, like, we just saw a bear swimming. So we're gonna always hang now or have bear barrels or whatever, but you know, we can do bear hangs. We know how to do that. We have the gear for that. But that was amazing to just see a bear, a black bear. That's the first black bear I've seen for years. So that was, that was like highlight of the trip.
an eventful morning. Eventful because we saw a bear, which was great fun. Also waves, um, pretty gnarly today. Not super bad, but like there's a lot of wind and um, they, we actually went with the waves for the most part, so it was good. But after all that, just two hours uh, since we left camp, we have now arrived back. You can see our car there. We've arrived. Um, and that's the end of the canoe portion of our vacation. That's the end of this particular video series or video that I'm doing. I'll put together into one thing. Um, now I, I have my bag here from the car of my of my uh, city clothes. Like, I mean, I just bring one set of clothes, right? So I'm looking forward to getting out of these. I'm gonna clean up down by the water and I might even rinse my hair and comb it out. It's, it's getting pretty fun. Um, yep, so we're here, we made it. And uh, still no service, still like disconnected from the world, but soon that will come to an end. So I'm enjoying these last, the last minutes or half an hour of this. <laughs>